everybody. Just a quick note about the video you're going to watch. This is actually an excerpt from a podcast interview I did for my podcast, Life Magnetics. And I'm talking to the wonderful Amber Poole, also known as the Chakra Diva. And we are having a bit of a discussion about psychic vocabulary and how things come in and how she recognizes spirit information. I just, I wanted to tell you that this entire interview is also posted on my YouTube. So you can go ahead and have a look for that. The entire interview is called The Magical Paranormal Life of the Chakra Diva. And you can absolutely look for my podcast wherever you enjoy good podcasts. The podcast is called Life Magnetics. This is episode eight, and it's just a really fun, human, but cosmic interview in which we discuss all things paranormal, spiritual, and we even get in to some predictions for 2022 and beyond. So suffice it to say, I had a lot of fun and let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the video now. You mentioned um, being able to bring in messages on the Ouija board uh, as you're mm -hmm. using the planchette. Did you also, because I know you're mediumistic, did you also feel something in addition to that? Could you sense them in any way? So I'm going back to the memory of it. I don't think so. It's interesting to me because I didn't realize that I was a medium until my first um, healing. Okay. So I automatically, you know, I had a, um, an illness which pleathered me into feeling energy and I thought this is crazy. And I asked my stepmom to lay down and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And this was before I heard of the words Reiki, right? So 2012, Reiki is not popular. It's not on the internet everywhere. I'm Googling magical hands because I could feel something, right? Okay. I, okay. I didn't know what it was. Right. And I said, lay down. I don't know what I'm doing. And I start to move across her energy. And all of a sudden, I knew there was a man here. And I said, there's a man with us. And she's like, yes. I said, uh, he's your father. And I get at the train station and he's leaving the coins for you. And she said, yes, he always went to work on the train station and would bring us back coins. And it didn't occur to me in that moment that I'm a medium. Yeah. I just went, huh, that was cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got it. <laughs> right. That was right. neat. Let me do this again. So I wasn't, um, I didn't go in for classes so that it opens up my mediumship. I didn't realize I was a medium. Now when I do it, I feel, right? I can feel male, females around. And then I go up in my head. Well, is this in family? Is this outside of family? Where does it fall in at? So did have you over time with your mediumship created kind of a system for understanding that? And yep. did you did you initiate that or did they initiate like is it a collaborative way? We we talk a lot in, in our gr uh, groups and in our programs about identifying your psychic vocabulary and like how spirit talks to you and how spirit feels to you when spirit's giving you a message. And some of sometimes we can initiate that vocabulary, but sometimes they do. So as you've developed this over time, I'm just wondering how it's come to you that you know that a male stands over here or that this presence or feeling is a female or a grandmother, et cetera. So I started to create with my, I always call my team. And I didn't know necessarily who my team was at first. I would just say, hey, I want to communicate with you. Let's do this. And I started in regular conversations. So when a person talks to me, uh, no matter what, the, you know, um, they're talking about Thanksgiving, then I would put a mental image in my head as they're talking, what does Thanksgiving look like? Mm -hmm. And I would see the table with the, you know, the turkey on top and I would go, okay, Thanksgiving. Um, so I would always take the sentences of everybody that was talking and go, how can I condense that into a symbol? I love it. That's great. Put it in my head, right? Mm -hmm. You just kind of bank it. And it doesn't, you don't need to remember the symbol. That's the best part. You don't need to remember the symbol because when you're having conversation, it comes back up right. and it's like, oh, I knew that. I, I have that. Um, yesterday when I did one, I saw a Christmas tree and I said, well, this is weird. There's a Christmas tree. And she said, well, my mother passed on Christmas. And I'm like, but I don't think that's what it is. So sometimes there's like, I have to go, okay, which way are we going? Which direction are we going in? Um, I said, she keeps talking about the garland on the Christmas tree. And she said, oh, that's so funny. My mom hates garland, right? Mm -hmm. So she was implying about the Christmas tree and her husband got rid of the Christmas tree the week before. 
because he doesn't want to put up Christmas trees because she's not there. Oh. So sometimes I feel like the symbol, like the symbol can just be a symbol unless I need something else to back it up. I need a second symbol to back up the first symbol. <laughs> got, it. got it. But you, you have a sense that there's something more in that moment. And so you keep. I keep asking. I'm like, give me something else. I need to know what is this? When we're open, like there's no limitations, right? We are the ones that limit ourselves. So when I can get quiet, I can know what's going on in my body. I can go out and say, okay, what are you trying to say to me? So I try to keep an open mind on everything. Even when I was doing healing, every time I step into the healing practice, I'm going to learn something new today, right? Spirit's mm -hmm. going to teach me something. I don't care that I've been doing it for years. I don't know everything. Spirit can always teach me something. Sure. Right. So I try to keep an open mind on my symbols, mm -hmm. you know, like um, yesterday when I was on the radio, I saw a grave graveyard. And she's like, yeah, a lot of my family's over on the other side. But then I heard brother. And she said, yes, we just found out that I have a brother. So I'm like, okay, the family's not all there. Got it. Right. So you need the background. You need more to come with it mm -hmm. to like understand sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think you can get so good in understanding your symbols that it's like just talking. <laughs> you know, I've I actually uh, perceived interdimensional energy trying to access that vocabulary and it was it was really kind of cool because it appeared in a holographic way and they were kind of just moving through the different symbols and then selecting one that like you said I have banked over time I've created my own vocabulary and then pulling it forward and offering it so they it, it seems to me that they actually access it to select the ones that make sense in order to communicate and then if they can't like if I haven't banked that particular one they will offer a new one and then mm -hmm. I have to do what you do and lean into it and try to figure out what they're trying to say but it's an interesting it's an interesting process but it's all happening like in the light yes in the field it's really yeah. cool the Light Shine Development Circle is a sacred place for spiritual seekers to practice giving and receiving readings. The circle is open to all psychics, oracle card readers, mediums, channels, energy healers, Akashic Records readers, and any other type of spiritual practitioner who offers their service via a reading style format. If you're ready to awaken your gifts and talents and fine tune your intuitive abilities, we'd love to have you in the circle.